I'm in India with my mate Josh. I'm about to graduate from university, so this would be my last long summer holiday before I'd have to get a job. This is really my last chance to do what I want to do. Wanting to make the most out of it, I decided I wanted to motorbike the Himalayas. So we're currently in Ley. We're trying the bikes that we're going to be um, riding. There are three key steps that needs to be sorted out for this journey. Cool. Same thing you used to. Really? I was driving down the neutral the whole way, I didn't realise. We were going to be riding Royal Enfield Classics. They are 300cc engines that cost $150 for a week's rental. Thanks, Steve, for helping us. Hey, dude, I have nothing to do, man. I'm more than happy to help you guys. While we're sorting out our bikes, a guy called Kieran makes friends with us. I would recommend riding all the way to Turtuk. Yeah. After talking to Kieran, we had a read. We were going to spend seven days travelling along the Nubra Valley to the town of Turtuk on the Pakistani border before coming back on ourselves and visiting Patong Lake. Very treacherous, uh, very adventurous and it's not for the faint-hearted. We had one final step to sort out. Why are we sorting out, Josh? Just in the permit shop sorting out our permits because some of them are on the border of Pakistan. We were ready. All we had to do now was go over one of the highest passes in the world. Let's do this, baby. To get us into the valley, which was going to take us to the border of Pakistan, we had to go over a pass higher than 5,000 meters. We're about to start the pass. It says two and a half hours to do the whole thing. We've taken like three, and we're nearly a third of the way. We soon learnt that Google Maps estimates on times and routes was way out. Basically, it's getting really dark, and it's our first day of riding in the Himalayas, and we've still got... Josh, how much further have we got to go? So too far. Too far. Hopefully, we won't be driving in the dark. We got to the top of this pass. We were meant to be here around two hours ago. We are really delayed. We need to get down and also altitude sickness is going to really start kicking in in a minute. So we've made it to where we're staying tonight. It turned out we would have to drive for like two hours in the night time. A bit of a shame because you're like past your reason for wanting to be here is to see those amazing views and when you're driving in the dark you don't see that but then at the same time there was a bit of like action man feel as we were like walking through these mountains. Tomorrow we head to somewhere called Turk Tank, which is very remote apparently um, and it's on the border of Pakistan. Being able to do this is so special. What, what a view to wake up on. So we've just come across the most awesome thing. It's like a festival in the middle of the Himalayas. Um, with an amphitheatre and like all of these performances happening and stuff. It's really interesting. You're driving along these roads and you're thinking, oh, there must be like different cultures and different groups of people who live around here. And then suddenly to come here and see that is really awesome. Seeing the festival made me think that there was so much more to these roads than just the view. 
We were driving to the town of Turtuk, which used to be part of Pakistan until the Indian army took control in 1971. For the last 50 years, India has claimed the town. Since the independence of India and Pakistan, the border has been site of numerous conflicts and is one of the most complex borders in the world. What's his name? Karim. Karim, okay. I wanted to talk to someone whose family had been affected by the change in the border. Um, could you say to the camera, what's your name? I'm Dr. Iqbal. I'm Dr. Muhammad Iqbal, in fact. Yeah. So how long have you lived in this town for? Yeah. Since my birth. Perfect. I was born here, born and brought up here. How did it change when it, when this... It changed came? overnight. Yeah, the uh, Pakistan, there was, uh, I think, the Pakistan didn't, Pakistan army didn't give any resistance to Indian assault. It's war. Yeah. So they fled away. How easy is it now to go to Pakistan if you uh, wanted to... Uh, for us, if uh, my brother is there in Pakistan, yeah. he lives at Skardo. If I want to go to meet him, I have to go through Wagha border. When was the last time you saw your brother? It was in 1985. A lot of people, they haven't seen their people for, for since 1971. Wow. Yeah. Maybe nowadays they might be seeing the, their people through WhatsApp and uh, for, through uh, Google Do. Uh, otherwise, uh, they might not have seen it since, since 1971. We've just um, finished talking to the uncle of the owner of the homestay we're staying at. The way that he has to go and see his brother is like we're literally 10 kilometers from Pakistan here. Um, but you can't just go over the border. Um, what you have to do is you have to go to Delhi, get a visa and then fly to Pakistan. Well, it's crazy um, just to see your relatives and that all happened over one night. So today um, we're heading off to Shyok. Uh, and we leave Turtuk, which is around an eight hour drive and back through the Nubra Valley. Staying in Turtuk has been incredible. Just over there, you can see, um, you can see the border of um, Pakistan. Knowing that there are people here who haven't been able to see their families for 40 years, and they literally live 20 kilometers in that direction. Over the next two days, we travel back down the valley to our final stop of the trip, Patongre. There's no more compassion, no. Praise me. Let's see if we can get through without the bike getting lost. I need something to last. Here in the mountains, there's Josh. And so there's the sunset. You can't really see the sunset, it's not really exposing something. And we're in this valley, and I go, hello! How big is your love? Tell me how high is your patience? Who can I be saved? Today's our last day. And this trip has been really awesome as we've been driving along those incredible valleys and passes and meeting all of these different people, the more I realise that actually, I want to do more things like this. So after a week of riding the bikes, we've returned then, and it's been a really awesome week. And that's where I think this ends. I definitely know that this motorbike journey isn't going to be the last. Sorry, Mum. <laughs> <laughs>